Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cast. Guys, uh, this is game two of the TA Escalation one night only tournament on April 20th of 2024. Uh, this will be part two of the tournament, the first game that I played, I recorded. Of course, there was no voice, it was just uh, the visual of me actually playing uh, the tournament game. And so, uh, that was round one. This is still round one. In fact, I will be, I won my game, uh, spoiler alert, uh, and I will be playing the winner of this game. So as the brackets are laid out, uh, it was me versus Tar Monkey or Monkey. And uh, whoever wins this game, which is Race and Goodfella, uh, will progress on and then face me. So because of that, I will probably fast forward this game a little bit. It's already about 30 minutes in. Uh, I have no idea how it's going, but I play the winner of this. So I want to make sure I don't have to make them wait too long by casting this game at normal speed. So I'm probably gonna slow it, I mean speed it up uh, quite a bit throughout this just so that uh, I don't have to make whoever wins this and will uh, face me in the next round two of the tournament wait too long. But uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, the players here. Uh, Race, of course, we all know and love. He is a normal, uh, very uh, widely casted on my channel. I'm sure anyone who's watched my channel for any amount of time uh, knows who Race is. Very strong, late game macro player uh, that loves to uh, just crush his opponent with a sheer brute force and uh but this good fellow player he's a bit of a question mark bit of a maverick i don't know who this guy is i've never uh, seen him uh, or cast him before i don't know if he's a pro ta player uh or an escalation player or an ota i don't know what he plays uh so that should be interesting seeing how this red uh kind of mystery man uh tries to unpack this game. But one thing I do want to say early on, uh, race going air first is a, a very strange and sort of unorthodox start in a 1v1. Now, in a team game where you've got two or three teammates, it's perfectly fine and normal to start air because there are uh, parts of this map, which is Air Monchili River, the same map that I just played on. There are parts of the map that can only be uh, accessible by air that only can be accessed by air. So these plateaus here, 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 and here. So that is the advantage that race will have by starting air first. He will get this metal and red has no way to access it unless he also goes air. But the disadvantage uh, for race by starting air first is exactly what we're seeing Red already sending armies of peewees uh, through the center of the map to the southwest corner, which will be Race's base. And Race truly does not have almost any defense. He has a couple of pulverizers and, of course, his commander. But uh, all that to say that what Race is doing here uh, is an extremely uh, risky and unorthodox start. But if he can survive it should pay off in his favor. Not only can the aircraft take these plateaus, as I mentioned, they can also take the island, uh, the islands as well, which have rivers between them, uh, and of course the air construction. Uh, the uh, construction aircraft will have no problem flying over the ponds to get to the side islands and start constructing a base. So I, again, will be casting this at somewhat of a increased or elevated speed, but uh, I'm sure it will be an interesting game. Again, the winner of this goes on to play me, but um, Race has done a very good job here. He's built some instigators just in the nick of time, putting them at these choke points and it seemed like he has just enough to stop the peewees from uh, getting into his base. However, there is another contingent of peewees that will make their way into races production and eco if he allows them to. And uh, race 
has built a single leveler. Uh, of course, I've mentioned levelers are incredibly effective uh, against Peewees. And he has his commander as well. Nice D-gun there. Uh, so Race should be able to hold this. He does have some Peewees uh, in, in his starting area, but uh, ultimately Race, with this greedy air start, seems to have found a way to make it work and now has control of the map. However, uh, a red player, Mr. Goodfella, he also has now gone air, so he will have fighters of his own scouting around the map looking for races, uh, construction aircraft, and looking for uh, ways to kill race. Uh, for example, these expansions can be targeted by aircraft. The mexes, of course, are vulnerable. But nonetheless, I think race has an advantage here just because he is now taking these side islands and uh, he has the plateaus. He will, I think, clean up what is happening on the low ground as well with some fighters flying over. But, uh, Goodfella using his Freedom Fighters pretty effectively to try and curtail this massive uh, expansionism that Race is participating in or engaging in uh, at about the 10 minute mark of the game. So Goodfella is ahead on Metal. And that is because Goodfella has taken the uh, expansions just outside of his base, including this middle expansion, where Race has really not been able to leave his base as effectively, given that he went air first. So uh, even though Race went air first and got a, a big advantage in terms of being able to, um, to take the islands for himself, uh, Goodfella has stabilized pretty well here. I'm impressed uh, by his ability to completely destroy um, all of Race's expansion on that top island, and of course this plateau as well. And uh, of course Race still has the southeast island, but he has failed to leave his starting base and get uh, the his economic uh, production at the level of our red player. But right now it is uh, very even between these two. Uh, I would have said that Race had an advantage when he had uh, both islands, but now Race only has the one island, and both players with a similar sized army as well. So it will come down to a lot of different things, such as uh, what the players choose to build or how they choose to use their eco. It stands to reason if both players have a similar... Uh, economic uh, situation than it what it boils down to how they decide to use their resources so what units they want to build what strategies they want to employ um, and uh, in this case red will be seems like building some pelicans so that is an interesting choice I think he's going to take these pelicans to the southeast island and attempt to uh, decolonize what race has taken there. And if Red was su uh, successfully able to uh, destroy Race's eco on this island, I think he would be uh, reasonably far ahead as uh, this was the gamble that Race took early on, uh, getting going air first and taking the islands. And if Red could uh, equalize that disadvantage, then he would probably be ahead overall. Now, uh, red attacking down the middle, trying to find this southwest corner base, and he will find it. It doesn't look like race can stop him from streaming in and probably killing the construction vehicles. Red using these pelicans to good effect. Uh, so far, I've been pretty impressed with uh, red's play. He's been on the aggressive essentially the whole game, uh, keeping a race from doing what he loves to do the most, which is expanding all over the map. He's already taken the northern island out and now working on the southern island as well. 
So preventing Race from getting that foothold that he so desperately wants in this game. Now building Mavericks. Uh, at this stage of the game, Mavericks can be incredibly decisive in terms of the amount of damage and carnage that they can inflict upon your opponent. Not only their armies, but also their base as well. The problem is there are very few players uh, that can beat a race in a straight up macro style game. So Red will need to keep race under control. He will need to make sure that race cannot expand because if given half an opportunity, race will, I think, take the lead very quickly. The single pelican, extremely annoying. You might want to degun that. Pelicans are, are so frustrating to deal with. He does degun it. But yeah, pelicans are so uh, frustrating to deal with because they're fast. Uh, they do a lot of damage. And uh, if they get veterancy, they become even more sort of overpowered and uh, hard to deal with. So we just saw, but now Red moving forward. He's got a nice army of uh, Peewees and some Javelins, but uh, crucially Mavericks. And these uh, will shred through any T1 unit. Like of, of Pudding, uh, these Raiders really don't stand much of a chance against the, against the massive Maverick DPS. Now, the Maverick is the quintessential glass cannon. It doesn't have a huge amount of health, but uh, against T1 units, it has enough health to survive and to kill them very rapidly. And now, Red advancing into Race's main base. Race bringing some Pyros to bear to see if he can stop this. These Mavericks are on a rampage. I'm sure they all have a decent amount of veterancy. Can the Pyros stop them? It's going to be close. The Mavericks have veterancy, so they're going to be stronger than they would normally be, and they're already strong. Yeah, these two Mavericks, the Bulls and the China Closet, the Fly and the Soup, they are absolutely rampaging through Race's base, and this was what I was worried about. The DPS of the Maverick is actually outrageous. Uh, just every shot, look, he's just killing vehicle plants. He just killed two vehicle plants, and an aircraft plant, and tons of wind generators, and now constructors, and, uh, you know, everything else. And he's still going. Oh my god. Guys, I cannot express to you how great of an attack that is. There's this uh, concept or idea in RTS called a timing attack. Timing attacks are very common in games like StarCraft. And the whole idea behind a timing attack... Uh, hold that thought. Here we go. Another another wave of Mavericks. But this time, race perhaps ready. But, uh, okay. What I was saying before is that Goodfella needs to keep race under control if he wants any chance of winning the game. And that is exactly what he has done. Goodfella, with this beautifully timed Maverick push keeping race from really being able to do much of anything. This Maverick is still here. Oh my god, 15 kills on this monster. Race has to be panicking. If I was in this situation, I would probably just call it GG. But race is not the kind of player to give up that easily. So he will continue to uh, persist in this game despite the fact that it looks terrible. Um... What I was saying before was that uh, Race is the kind of player that, uh, it, he, if left unchecked, will almost certainly beat you in a long macro game. He will uh, out uh, outproduce you and have a stronger uh, stronger base and economy. So the only way to beat him is to uh, prevent him from being able to get to that stage where he can uh, be so far ahead of you or have such an economic foothold on the map that he will simply crush you uh, through a war of attrition. And that is exactly what Red has done with these uh, this beautifully timed Maverick push. Multiple Maverick pushes now. And the thing is, Mavericks are even good against Pyros because uh, the ranges might be similar, but the Mavericks are much more accurate 
and uh, they can kill the pyros extremely quickly, but it seems like Race perhaps had enough pyros to push that uh, back that attack for now. But as I was saying before, there is a concept uh, in RTS called a timing attack. It's very uh, common, more common in a game like StarCraft 1 or 2. Now, timing attacks are really interesting. The reason they're called timing attacks is because it is and it's an attack designed to work at a very specific time of the game. In other words, some of these attacks, you're building a specific composition, a specific army of units, perfectly designed to counter or kill your opponent at a, at a specific time of the game. Now, what makes this interesting, the timing attack, is that like that timing could be incredibly precise. We're talking about 30 seconds. You may have a 30 second window of time where this attack will work. Everything has to be done perfectly. You have to build your base. You have to defend your area. You have to construct your buildings and construct your units and construct your strategy at a perfect time to create this 30 second window. So like, let's say the 30 second window is, you know, 15 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, you have to have an army of Mavericks uh, to be able to send in the enemy base, which you know is going to be just before they have the capability to stop them. So if, if Red had attacked 30 seconds later, or maybe a minute later, Race might have been able to stop him. He might have had enough pyros or cans or whatever it was, but Red attacked at that perfect moment. Uh, the thing was, Race had a huge army of uh, raiders there, but the and that would have stopped almost anything uh, at that point, except for Mavericks, because the Maverick DPS is so high they can just chew through the raider armor. Uh, but if it was any other unit like Zeus's, even Fido's, uh, or shooters or anything else, that uh, it would have given Race enough time to get to T2 himself and start building the counter that he needed to survive that. So. This is the concept of a timing attack. Uh, and it's so interesting uh, in RTS, these attacks that, that will, they have like a 30 second window where they can work. And uh, if you do it any later than that, it won't work. But if you can find that perfect window of opportunity, uh, then you will basically win the game. Now, Red has not won the game. Uh, Race is still in it, but Red, I, I think, is undeniably ahead here. Just looking at the uh, economic situation, red with, uh, well, race is doing okay, but uh, the numbers are fluctuating here. Actually, they're pretty even. Guys, this is why you have to keep race down. This man is scary. It's like, you unless you continuously destroy his base, he will pull ahead of you economically. It's just his skill as a player. It's just his style. It's what he's good at, and he understands his strength. So Red has to keep the constant aggression going. Uh, he, I still think Red's in an advantageous position, but this game is far from over, despite Red's beautiful and beautifully timed attacks. Race uh, is not one to give up easily. Like I said, if it were me, I would have tapped out the minute those Mavericks got into my base and started rampaging through everything and killing all my production structures. I probably would have said, uh, yeah, no, no, thank you. Uh, I, I prefer not to die a slow and painful death, but race is not that kind of player. He will keep the pressure up. Another thing, or he will, he will keep his, uh, keep his mental in a good place and, uh, keep, keep himself in the game with a very nice defensive style and already he's converted most of his, in fact, it looks like all of his T1 Maxis to T2 and that is how he's staying even with Red. Even though Red has more of the map, uh, Race is so great at his macro, he is still fairly even economically to the Red player. Now one thing Race is doing here, he's built a deleter that is uh, a couple of them, and a, and a Spectre as well, so this is one thing that is a much more advanced player type strategy. Building these um, radar jammers is so, is so effective. It prevents your enemy from being able to engage you unless they have visual range. Here's the problem. 
Goodfella has a pretty short to medium ranged army, but Race has pillagers. Race can pick off Red's army from a range, so if he deletes his radar signatures, he's going to have an advantage in the battle. Right now, the battle will take place. I favor Race's army here. Cans are quite strong against Mavericks and Fido's if they can get in range. But Red is looking to avoid the main engagement and get back into Race's base and inflict even more devastating economic damage. But it looks like Race possibly, possibly maybe, possibly somehow may actually kill this. Oh no, the one Maverick. Oh no, we've already seen what ma one Maverick can do. This is so bad. Please, God, don't let this Maverick kill everything. Okay, just in time, Race kills that one Maverick. But guys, just imagine if there was one or two more Mavericks there. One or two more Mavericks and most of Race's base, this would be dead. He, he would probably just lose the game. Uh, so that's how close this is. This is this is balanced on a razor's edge. This is a very close match, but race showing us the power of his tenacity and mental strength. Uh, I've already casted plenty of games where players have complete meltdowns. Well, guys, this is uh, the opposite. This is what it looks like when a player has a great mental, uh, has the ability to. Uh, bounce back from a terrible situation. Uh, five, 10 minutes ago, it looked like Race was absolutely dead and he probably should have been dead, but uh, he has somehow managed to crawl back in this game on his hands and knees, somehow managed to get back into this. Now, good fella, uh, almost comically sending Jeffies into the pillager line and the pillagers are probably inflicting more friendly fire on one another than they are these Jeffies. But I think Race now has all the momentum. And one other thing Race is doing that's uh, very interesting is these, uh, these Mantis, which make it difficult for Red to use his aerial advantage at all. These Mantis will, uh, they will simply chew through those Freedom Fighters in moments. So the Mantis uh, is a nice addition to this army, preventing Red from using his air as effectively as he wants. However, Red building some uh, Phoenixes as well. So Red not content to let this game spiral out of control in the way that it has. He's not content to just let Race slowly crush him through economic means. Red is now, let's slow it down. Red is now going for yet another attack, looking for the juicy targets. Oh my god, who is this player? Who is Goodfella? This guy is a monster. Holy cow, this is just a clinic on how to handle this kind of game. Uh, Red, with such beautiful play here, he gets the advanced vehicle plant, he gets the fusions, once again, keeping Race down. Once again, preventing Race from being able to play his game and uh, use the style that Race is so well known for. I love what Red is doing here. Red, Mr. Goodfella, I would have said at the beginning of this cast uh, that uh, I would much prefer Goodfella to win because I do not want to play Race in the next uh, match of the tournament. But uh, in this case, I'm not so sure anymore. I think maybe I would prefer to play race over this guy. This guy is giving me chills. I uh, don't know what to say. It's just really impressive play. Really great uh, ability to continuously find avenues of approach. Find uh, vulnerable uh, spaces within a race's defense. To, uh, to punish him and uh, to try to equalize the game or to gain an advantage. Now certainly, Red had an advantage uh, just a few minutes ago, but now Race 
just looking unstoppable even after that bombing run is still so uh so far ahead economically somehow i mean i think red is just going to struggle with races overwhelming macro style but red is not done he is nowhere near finished he is now teching to t3 looking for his next timing attack looking for his next opportunity looking for the next possibility that he can uh, create to once again give himself an advantage in this game and perhaps find a path towards victory now if red can finish t3 this is the arm t3 k bot there is a timing where uh race will probably not be ready for this the issue is that red i think doesn't quite have the energy he needs to do this uh, at least quickly and now race for the first time in the game with a huge and effective counterattack. oh my god i don't think red's ready for this he is bringing some pelicans these will be quite effective so he will ultimately push this off but he'll lose quite a bit of his eco and now race pushing through the middle as well oh my god how is race doing this how is he staying not only staying in this game but pulling ahead Red building marauders but one marauder is not going to make the difference here race will now know he's on t3 but good god almighty i don't know if uh good fella can stop what race has here red pulling out all the stops lots of pelicans and marauders well one marauder and lots of pelicans second marauder finally finishing oh my god red may just stop this this is so close i cannot believe this game it is unbelievable it's been so back and forth both of these players with very different styles but both of them showing us the advantage of each style and how much uh, how much strategy and and uh, potentiality escalation has for the different uh, types of play styles and how well they can work together to create these uh, really dynamic and interesting games uh, where man somehow red survives that push race had a massive army but red survives with uh, the skin of his teeth and now ready to do a push of his, his own perhaps a deadly counterattack. a uh, pelicans roccos and marauders oh my i think blue could be in a a bit of trouble oh my god this is so back and forth i i can't even say who's winning race now moving to t3 he's aware that he is at a disadvantage in terms of tech but race is ahead economically about 50 metal ahead 50 metal per second ahead which uh at this stage of the game is significant that's nothing to scoff at race i like that he's defended his uh southeast base uh, that will prevent Red from easily moving these Pelicans into position and perhaps getting some damage done on Race. But uh, once again, I can't believe despite the fact that Red has just harassed Race into oblivion with so many effective attacks with uh, Mavericks, Pelicans, and bombing runs uh, that Race is still not only managed to cling to life but even pulling ahead now on t2 hovers building the nemesis the nemesis the uh core t2 riot control hovercraft and uh we'll have to see how those perform in this game now guys one thing you may notice are these goliaths these goliaths uh do not look like normal goliaths you can see they've got uh sort of these squares on their on top of the uh, tracks and uh, that indicates that is an upgraded goliath so in the latest patch of escalation that would be escalation patch nine nine 
what was it? 997. You can now upgrade your factories, which will allow you to produce super goliaths. And that is what we are witnessing right now. Can the super goliaths give race the advantage he needs? Race pulling even further ahead economically. Now closer to 60 uh, metal per second ahead. This is what I uh, predicted would happen. This is kind of what I mentioned at the beginning of the cast. Man, race with a beautiful defense. Not only does he have the light laser towers that he so desperately needs, but he also has the Nemesi, the riot control tank, and those will make short work of the Pelican. So this is why it is so difficult to dismantle race. He is very effective at his uh, defensive style gameplay. However, Red is now building mantle extractors at uh, this part of his base. And so that may allow him to equalize the playing field somewhat. But the issue is that uh, race with his mastery of defense will be a tough nut to crack. A tough, uh, tough nut to crack both proverbially and literally, I think uh, Reese's base starting to look a bit impenetrable. Even all of these marauders are going to have a difficult time breaking through the gats, breaking through the emulators, breaking through the cans, the vipers, and the goliaths. And this ultra kbot gantry is now working on Talos as well. Race doing everything he can to create the uh, impenetrable Maginot line that he needs. Hopefully his opponent will not simply go around it as Germany did in World War II. He could try to attack here. This is certainly the weakest spot of race's defense. And if history gives us any indication, Red will go on the aggressive. He will go on the attack very soon. But he needs to find that avenue of approach that will work for him. He does have a decent number of marauders. If this might work. It's going to be close. Race has pillagers. He's got cans. He's got his first Talos just coming off of the assembly line. I don't know if Red has enough to break this. But I also don't know if Red has much of a choice. Uh, I think if the game simply goes on... And definitely, Race will have the advantage in the long term. It's just his strength as a player to uh, overwhelm your opponent or his opponent. So here we go. Here comes this attack. Here comes this uh, epic attempt for another push into Race's base. I think this has to be decisive. I, I would almost say that if this attack does not get something done... Race is going to slowly pull ahead. As you can see, he's already got some presence on the islands. Red needs to avoid this. This is where all the defenses are. He's walking straight into the most heavily defended area of Race's base. This is not where he wants to be. This is not going to work. Uh, I think Red's going to lose his whole army. This was the approach, the one that I marked with the pink arrow walking straight into race's defense definitely not the play and with that i think race will take a commanding lead of this game which doesn't mean that red can't beat him he's working on a raptor but guys this is what race does look race uh in terms of uh, metal is pretty even but he is over doubling red's energy and that is so crucial at this stage of the game uh Good fellow working on a raptor, but he doesn't have the energy to build the raptor. He can't afford this in any reasonable amount of time. Race, on the other hand, he could build a Krogoth if he wanted. Uh, he has enough energy to uh, produce or uh, efficiently create a Krogoth uh, at the uh, in an amount of time that uh, he would be able to bring it out and. Uh, have an assault on uh, Goodfellow's base. However, Race is using all of his energy still. 
So that just gives you an idea. Race is on 13,000 energy per second. Goodfella is on 5,000. And Race is still using all of his energy. So that should just give you an idea of how uh, energy starved our red player is uh, compared to Race. Uh, Race is just pulling ahead and if Red does not inflict more damage on him, Race I think will crush him under the weight of his absolutely divine macro skills. Now moving forward with three Talos and Cans and even some Mantis for air defense. This is by all accounts a terrifying army. It's got everything it needs. It's got cans for front line. It's got Talos for damage. It's got Mantis for air defense. It's got everything it needs to be the army that will end the world of men. The Arm Menace, the last hope for humanity in serious trouble. What a game this has been. Holy cow. I, I, I was just going to cast this because it's, uh, it is a precursor to my next match. I win. I, I play whoever wins this game. Uh, and I was just going to cast it to kind of pass the time but and, and build up to, my uh, to the game that I'm going to play next against the winner of this. But uh, this has gone from being a sideshow to the main event. What a game this has been. I didn't expect this. This is happening live, so I had no idea that this game was going to be so freaking epic reaching t3 and a 1v1 going the distance red applying such egregious pressure but race in the face of all adversity finding some god forsaken way to survive how does the man do it give him a fucking medal holy cow race now going into ultra vehicle plans as well Things are just going to get worse for our red player. Guys, this is something that is difficult to articulate as a caster, uh, as a player of, of Total Annihilation. But this is so important. There is a feature, there is an ability that good players have that... that uh, that average players don't. I wouldn't even call it, you know, it's it's something, it's, it's, it's like an understanding of the game that comes after years or decades of playing. And that is imagination. A top level player, a pro, quote unquote, has imagination. And what that means is they can think on terms of scale that most players can't even dream of. Hold that thought. Goodfellow finally finishes his Raptor and he's going to need it. He's going to need this Raptor because if that Raptor had not just finished in the nick of time, Red would have lost everything. Holy cow, this game is so freaking close. That clutch Raptor just kept our, our boy Goodfellow in the game somehow, some way this guy holy crap race was just about to crush his base this was game over this single raptor is the only thing standing between red and the freaking abyss what the hell is happening this game is so awesome this is exactly how ta should be boys this is the pinnacle of ta 1v1 escalation gameplay this raptor Oh my god, it may not even be enough. Race has so much crap. It is just disgusting. And now, pelting Red's base from afar. Red in so much trouble. It's unbelievable. This is a game for the ages. Oh my god, how is Race winning? Also with the Cyclops, the... Uh, or T2 Hovercraft Artillery Platform. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Race now knocking on the door. Standing on the doorstep. Standing on the precipice of victory. Snatched from the very jaws of defeat. 
Mr. Red with his Raptor. Somehow, and this thing it healed. It looks like it healed. I don't know how he healed it so quickly. It looks like it's at full health again, so uh, I don't know what kind of cheat codes Red put in. Maybe he... I feel like... I don't know how he repaired it so quickly. That issue. I don't know what happened, guys, but uh, yeah, it looks like Red's going to tap out. I think he knows that Race is so far ahead that, that maybe even with this Raptor, he's not going to be able to stay in the game. I really would like Red to stay in and just play this out because this game has been such a treat, so unbelievable to watch. Uh, Race should have been dead several times. A lesser player would have tapped out so many times. I would have tapped out. The minute those Mavericks were in my base, I would have been like, GG. It is terrifying to think that I'm going to have to play race after this. It is terrifying to think that I'm going to be subjected to this cruel and unusual punishment uh, banned by the United States Bill of Rights. I shouldn't have to deal with this. I shouldn't be subjected to such a torturous occasion as having to face race in a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't really feel great for my chances, I'm going to be honest with you. This seems a bit hopeless, and I haven't even started playing the game yet, but after witnessing this event, how can you feel anything but sheer awe? Holy cow, race should have died so many times, but yet he persists. But Red, despite saying GG, he's still in it. 59 kills on this Raptor. Building some Marauders. He might go for a final uh, attack, a final hurrah, a, uh, a Hail Mary in football terms, American football. A Hail Mary attempt to see if he can finally kill Race. But okay, as I was saying before, this idea that got interrupted uh, with the epic gameplay, one thing uh, that the best players have is imagination. This is like a skill that can't be taught. It's something that um, is difficult to even uh, explain. But essentially, what imagination is as it applies to like escalation, not just escalation, but really any TA uh, style game. So this is also true in Bar, it's true in Faf, uh, it's true in Planetary Annihilation and whatever else. Having this imagination uh, allows you to do things that average or even good players cannot do. Red will find some Cyclops sitting off the shoreline and he will chunk them out of existence with his uh, little Marauder army. But the problem is race is so far ahead economically that it almost doesn't matter. Red now with a Cerberus, but Red Red has not been using his metal for a long time. So what is imagination as it applies to uh, player like skill in an RTS or especially in a TA uh, style RTS? Imagination is the ability to envision an economy that never stops growing. It is the ability to continuously scale your economy and to, and to imagine a bigger and, and, and uh, even more uh, outrageous uh, economic situation than what you have. It's the kind of skill that you need to play a game uh, like Factorio. If, if anyone's ever tried to play fact, like, like these factory simulators, these games require imagination. Because what happens is you start out like playing a game like Factorio and you build your, your factories. You build like you know a belt of factories. And after a short amount of time, you realize that in order to achieve the objectives to win the game, to launch a rocket, you what you've built is nowhere near big enough, right? You're like your, your little belt of factories is a joke. You're going to have to double that. And then once you double the size of your factory, you realize you're gonna to have to triple it. 
And then you realize you're going to have to quadruple it. And then you realize you're going to have to quintuple it. And then you realize, etc. Right? Like, the, the, the game forces you to keep expanding your consciousness and to keep growing uh, your idea of how large your base has to be in order to functionally create... I mean, at the beginning of Factorio, you can build things by hand, right? You don't even need a building. But you... you, you in order for you to, to be a good player and to even beat the game, you must constantly expand your consciousness and your awareness and your imagination about what is possible, about what your base can be. And it's the same thing in this game. At the beginning of TA, you know, you're starting with a couple metal extractors and some wind generators. And then maybe you'll build a geo, right? And then you go to T2 and maybe you build a resource generator and then a fusion. But you have to continuously increase uh, your... You have to have this ability to envision uh, either even greater uh, economic heights than what you're already at. And that doesn't sound like it may not sound like something that's that, that important, but it is. It's, it's very difficult to do. Most players, when they reach a certain point, will simply collapse. Like mentally, they cannot, their brain cannot envision, like they, they've reached a, a sort of barrier or a, uh, a choke point. In their, in their mind where it's like their their Pentium processor just can't really go any further than what it is and so this is what will happen this this seems like what's happening to Red he he's at the stage of the game where he should be building uh, the mega fusions the, the antimatter reactors that's the only way he can really keep his economy um, this is the only way he can continue to stay in this game uh, and, and have any chance against race is to is to start building antimatter fusions. Well, that thought, there is a raptor. And uh, there was a nuke. So Red has built a nuclear device. This is going to have to be his last hope, I think. There's no longer any chance that this raptor is going to break through race's base, so it will depend on how much he can do with the nuke. But guys, even if this nuke lands, even in the best case scenario, it's not going to kill race. It may deal a lot of damage, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Race's imagination as it pertains to his ability to uh, in increasingly uh, expand his consciousness and uh, to create a larger and larger scale basis and larger and larger scale economies. Um, look at this. He's now like tripling and quadrupling Red's eco. Uh, it's unbelievable. And, and not only is he quadrupling Red's eco, he's using all of his resources. It's another part of this. It's not enough just to build a massive base. You also have to have the ability to use those resources. That's part of the imagination that is required to increase the scale so ultimately race will not get as much I think achieved with that as he wanted red building fusions all over the place and of course he still has a nuke and I'm not sure I don't think race is aware of this nuke so that is uh, that is a bit uh, scary now Attempting to repair the raptor again, I assume. He's got to repair this if he wants any chance of holding on. But once again, look at this. Not only does race have 41,000 energy per second, which is more than quadrupling red. He's using all of it. He's using 40,000 energy per second. That's what I'm talking about. Like This is the skill required. You must have the imagination necessary. It doesn't matter that race uh, may not win the game immediately. It may take him another uh, you know, 10 or 20 minutes. It's almost a foregone conclusion. Race's processor is so advanced that it's like <laughs> red cannot use 133 metal per second. 
He can't. He has not been using his metal for the past 20 minutes. He's been maxed out on metal. He can't use it. Race is using 600 metal per second. Right. Th this is the, this is what I, this is what I mean by macro player. This is what I mean by uh, overwhelming your opponent uh, through a war of attrition. It's this power of imagination. This ability to scale your base infinitely, as much as it needs to be scaled as the game progresses. This is a skill that few players have. And I'm talking about even the best players. Very few of them can do it like this. I, I Even I don't have this level of imagination. I, this is where I start to struggle. I cannot uh, envision uh, the base that I will need to survive the late game. Or to compete in the late game with someone like Race. Which is why most of the time you just want to kill someone like Grace. You just want to kill them. You, you don't want to let them get to this phase where they will basically outwit you um, and uh, win through a, a war of imagination. It's unbelievable. This is this has been such an amazing game on so many levels. I I can't believe this. This, this game was just supposed to be a. a warm-up round. I think in the end I'm going to be the warm-up round for race. I think probably what's going to happen is that race is going to crush me uh, into little into little pieces and then uh, what's left of me will be sent somewhere in an ambulance and uh, my shame will be televised for the world to see I will perhaps pull out a samurai sword and uh, end of my humiliation. But after that, after Race beats me, he will go on to fight the final player, which we can all assume will be Harold. What a game this has been. What an impressive feat. What a, what a show by both sides. I bet Race is probably now waiting for me. I assume that this game has ended. We are a little bit behind real time, but nonetheless, I think this is a great example of what happens when a player with this level of imagination can survive until the hour and 20 minute mark. You just can't let Race do this. This man will crush you with his superior processing power. The second raptor now dead, and with that, any hope that Mr. Goodfella, his commander, will die. The nuke won't even stand a chance. What a game. Holy freaking cow. Thank you all for watching. I don't know what to say. I did not expect that. I expected a short game, and what I got was unbelievable. Thank you all for watching. The next game will be me versus race, and uh, I'm pooping my pants right now. So, uh, yeah. Good luck to me.